Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 3 januari 2016. Ik heb me nog steeds niet vergist. Vorig jaar gebeurde dat herhaaldelijk. Uh, maar het is 2016. Uh, dit is het bulletin van zondag. We beginnen trouwens vandaag met twee historische fragmenten. Eerst de eerste 15 seconden van PI2 NOS op 1 januari 2013. En daarna de eerste 15 seconden van PI3 UTR op diezelfde datum. Dit is PE1RJV. Iedereen een hele goede avond. Een heel goed en radioactief 2013 toegewenst. PI3 UTR is bij deze geopend en voor iedereen bruikbaar. PE1RJV. Ja, Roger Paul. Ontvang hier. PD4 uh, ROB. Gefeliciteerd. Uh. In het weekend zijn de Daily Minutes in het Engels. We hebben Contestia vandaag en ook een plaatje in SSTV met de BW12. Het heeft te maken met zeezenders. Welcome to the English Weekend Bulletin of the, of, the, of the Daily Minutes. As we stated yesterday, no propagation bulletin was issued. So, we, so with the help of the amateur radio newsline and VK1WIA, we will have some news items for you today. We do also have Contestia today with the usual properties of 125 bandwidth 8 tones and central frequency 355 hertz. And we will also have an SSTV picture in BW12 at the end of the bulletin. The National Institute of Amateur Radio in India has had a busy calendar, one that included a major conference as well as a police department training session back-to-back. Attending the 2015 Applied Electromagnetics Conference in Assam, India, NIAR's Executive Vice Chairman and Director S. Ram Mohan, VU2MYH, led a panel discussion on establishing communications during major disasters that knock out conventional means. Later, using the special call sign 8T5APS, he was joined by Jose Jacob, VU2JOS, in demonstrating how a ham radio station works. The conference, held at the Indian Institute of Technology, was attended by students and staff of the school, as well as delegates throughout India. The NIAR hams also led an amateur radio awareness program for law enforcement officials at the Assam Police Radio Organization Training School in Guwahati, Assam, demonstrating HF as well as PACTOR communications. Operators and technicians who work for the police department are to be trained in various modes of radio communication, including Morse code. The Radio Society of Great Britain believes the growth of amateur radio in the UK is at risk as a result of insufficient primary allocations on the spectrum. Speaking in the UK Spectrum Usage and Demand second report released December 18th, the RSGB noted that without primary ham radio allocations between 400 MHz and 24 GHz in the UK, confidence, investment and growth of ham radio is severely restricted. According to the RSGB, this creates a particularly difficult situation for Earth, Moon, Earth, narrowband terrestrial systems, and satellite transponders. The society recommended adding to the spectrum to enable experimentation along with an expansion of digital voice. The society would also like to see space for an extension of digital TV, new data modes, and higher data speed technologies. The forum is a sounding board on long-term spectrum issues for the government in the UK and for Ofcom. Looking to DX... Rob, DL7VOA, is on the air from Vanuatu in the South Pacific until January 13th using the call YJ4AO, mainly during the local evening and night hours, QSL to his home call. Stefan, DF8HS, is active as DF8HS stroke P from Furman Island until January 11th working SSB, RTTY, and PSK on 80 through 10 meters. QSL via his home call sign, via the Bureau, or direct. Harry, JG7PSJ, is operating as JD1BMH from Ogasawara until January 9th. He's active on all bands and using SSB, CW, and RTTY. Send QSLs to his home call. Bernhardt, DL2GAC, is preparing to work as H44MS on a DX vacation in Honiara, Guadalcanal, and the Solomon Islands between January 19th and April 14th. He'll be on 80 meters through 6 meters and possibly 160. He's working SSB only, send QSLs to his home call or via the Bureau. Andrea, HB9DUR, is working as EX stroke HB9DUR from Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan until January 8th. 
He's working holiday style on all HF bands, but primarily the higher bands. QSL via his home call, direct or via Club Logs, OQRS. Welcome to the new year. I'm Graham VK4BB. This is WIA and the National News Service for week commencing January 3rd, 2016. And a boy unconscious after hoverboard accident. A teenager is in a Sydney hospital after falling off his new hoverboard. The 16-year-old was knocked unconscious whilst trying out the board and had to be rushed by ambulance to a waiting rescue helicopter at Eleonora Heights on Sydney's northern beaches. These new tech, high-tech hoverboards look like skateboards but with larger wheels and are designed to mimic the levitating boards which featured in the smash hit Back to the Future 2. They've been a popular item for youngsters this Christmas and can cost up to $2,000, but they don't actually hover, or do they? In the USA, seconds after Dmitry Popescu first levitated about a foot off the ground at his aerospace company's warehouse, he fell to his knees and screamed, we've really done it. He and his colleagues at Arca Space Corporation had built a mattress-shaped vehicle that hovers in mid-air and, when its stabilising features are switched off, allows riders to surf on the thrust of three dozen high-speed fans. These spin at 45,000 rotations per minute. The board levitates vertically off the ground, much like a Harrier jump jet. Like the other so-called hoverboards, it's powered by a lithium-ion battery. No, it's not the first actual hoverboard, but unlike the concept device unveiled by luxury automaker Lexus in June, until now the closest anyone had come to a levitating board, this one is for sale. Slated for delivery in April, the company is taking pre-orders for the nearly $2,000 US device. Hospital emergency rooms, beware. Aussie balloons are delight for trackers. The high-altitude Pico Balloon PS57, launched from Melbourne December 12, is expected over South Africa, with stations there already tracking the flight. Meantime, Andy VK3YT reports the earlier PS56 balloon has now completed its second navigation of the Southern Hemisphere. Despite a catastrophic failure of its GPS tracking, and is still floating. For information on how it's being done, see the text edition of last week's VK1WIA broadcast. A lot of interest is being attracted by the PS57 balloon with its solar-powered payload of a 25 milliwatt transmitter on Whisper and JT9. Its movement has been closely tracked and reported at more than 9,000 metres in altitude by data transmissions heard in the US and Canada. The tiny party-type balloon slowly floated over Colombia and Venezuela, then the Atlantic Ocean, around the northern end of South America, going parallel to the coast until Rio de Janeiro. By last Wednesday, it had turned east, heading for South Africa, closely watched by at least four trackers in ZS land, where it is expected to exit on its final circumnavigation leg to Australia. The latest launch by Andy VK3YT is PS58 that has taken an inland route over East Victoria and is now off Queensland over the Coral Sea. Meantime, a larger scale, Project Horus has floated a Japanese-made red-coloured weather balloon over Adelaide with its up-and-down flight to test telemetry before really hot weather returned. Mark VK5QI and David VK5DGR deemed it a success. Others helped in the tracking of it as well. When it came down, landowners disabled electric fences, opened gates and a flock of sheep looked on curiously as some direction finding of the ritty payload found it perched two metres up in gum trees. Another Project Horus flight was expected in this round of tests, reported on the Australian Radio Experimenters Group website, areg.org.au. Both the Pico balloons by Andy VK3YT and Project Horus are to be the subject of a two-part feature article in the WIA journal, Amateur Radio Magazine.
Weet jij eigenlijk wat smerige piraten zijn? Ja, dat is een gewas, net als asperges. Oh. Als je die uit de grond trekt, dan zijn ze nogal smerig. Even een straal water eroverheen, en dan is er niets meer aan de hand. Dan zijn het schone piraten.